Hello and in today we're going to be installing STM32Cube IDE. This IDE is one of the many options of programming STM32s but it is for free as long as you have an email account. So first what we're going to do is we're going to search STM32Cube IDE. This should come up with STM's web page and it will directly link you to it. On the downloads page, just scroll down and then you have multiple options for whatever operating system you're using. We are going to be using the Windows installer and then we just say get latest. Have a look at the license agreement if you want to, click accept. Then it's going to ask you for a email address. I've basically ran out of email addresses, so I'm just going to fill in star star, and then I'm going to go to a website called tempmail. It gives me a temporary email address, paste in the link, download. Okay, states the download link is only valid for 24 hours. And then we wait in our inbox. And you can see we have the mail from our inbox. We can go to download now. Go to our email address. And then we can open it in a new tab. Okay, that will take us back to the original page we were on. Here you can select a version. The latest one at the time is 1.9 and that's the one we are going to be working on. So we just say get latest. So accept. You can see our download has started while that's downloading. We can also, if you have an ST link, we can get the programmer. Uh, so this is the cube programmer. You just scroll down and then we can also say for the Windows 64 bit system, we can just say get latest here, uh, accept, then uh, that's downloading. Uh, latest version at the time of recording is 2.10. I'm not going to be using this much since I'm using a J-Link to program my STM32. Then another optional download is CubeMX. Now CubeMX is useful if you're using another IDE, but this is already integrated into the Cube IDE. So I'm going to wait for these to download. I'm not going to be using CubeMX since it's integrated already, but it is useful if you're using something like Kale or Seger or one of the other embedded studios. All right, everything is downloaded now. We have a zip file for the Cube IDE and then for the Cube programmer. So first off, we need to extract both of these. As soon as it's finished extracting, and we have two of these, which are the installers. First one we are going to be installing is the programmer. Let's click yes for the administrators. Next, I agree, wherever you want to have it installed. In my case, I'm going to be installing the J-Link driver since I'm going to be using a J-Link as the programmer. And then the ST-Link drivers whenever I can acquire a ST-Link install. If you're prompted with a driver install, this is now both for the programmer and the Cube IDE. Just click install. Okay, now programmer's installed. We just click next. And in my case, I'm going to create a desktop shortcut. Okay, now that's installed. Now we can set up the Cube IDE. Prompted for administrator, just say yes. It extracts. So next, next. I accept the license agreement. Here you can set where to install the IDE. I'm going to use the default location. We say next. The Docker directory will be created. Yes, we want to create the Docker directory. I am going to install the trusted creator package. I may use this. I may not use this. Then also it installs the cube programmer, which is technically already installed, but we'll just let it do its thing. We say next, and then it's going to start installing. If you are prompted with a driver installation, just click next and finish. Okay, now we're finished with the package installation. We can click next, create a desktop shortcut, create an additional desktop icon, leave everything as default. We keep this as is. I'm going to install for all the users and next and done. Now we can open up the programmer just to have a look. Okay, over here we have our programmer. Primarily, I'm going to be using this for doing a full erase on a chip if necessary. And we got STM32 Cube IDE. Okay, so Cube IDE is based on Eclipse. This requires you to have a workspace. So you can set this to any directory and this is where all your code will live for that specific workspace. You can have multiple workspaces, but in my case, I'm only going to be having one workspace. 
Then we click launch and that will launch our IDE. And if it's the first time opening it, it will give you a document here, which we are not going to be really using. We have to allow it some network access so that it can download SDKs for us. And then they want the usage statistics. I am not going to provide it in my case. It's anyways inside a VM, so no point in giving them any statistics. Okay, then you'll be greeted with the IDE itself. So you can start your new projects and all the things over here. That's it for installing STM32Q by DE. A like, share, comment and subscribe is always appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.